Now, you know, on this channel, I have a tendency, just a small one, to be critical of client media and games journalism. In fact, I think we're all at a point where we're a little bit skeptical of anything that comes out of a major gaming publication. But I gotta give it today to PC Gamer because they have actually come out with an editorial that's been on their front page now for three whole days and openly criticized Nintendo as a company. And you might say, whoop de doo old man Banjo. At this point, everyone and their mom who doesn't even play computer games is criticizing Nintendo after everything they've done over the past decade and more. The only people that are still defending Nintendo are people that thought the joysticks for the original Switch controller were good and their entire room is nothing but Fire Emblem merch. And if you were to say those things to me, you would be right. But there's a point here that could get missed, and that is that let's be honest about how client media like PC Gamer, Eurogamer, and all the other major outlets in the gaming space work. Yeah, K Kotaku as well. Kind of feels bad to put Kotaku in the same breath as people that still actually write. Anyways, 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 the, the point I'm trying to get at is that what separates games journalists from just your average guy making a commentary YouTube video at this point in time with YouTube and the internet and social media is their inside access to game developers. That's that's kind of what makes what, you know, puts the puts the money in the AdSense account, if you know what I mean. So for PC Gamer to just come out and say Nintendo are a horrible company is a big step for an one of the most respected, if not the most respected outlet in gaming journalism over the over the long history of gaming. I remember <laughs> leave me a note in the comments below if you were one of those kids like me that like back in the like really early 2000s. PC Gamer, if you're too young to remember, but PC Gamer in like the year 2000, 2001, that was prime entertainment. Anyways, the TLDR, it's a it's a big deal for a major gaming publication to target a major game producer and just say, you're evil. You know, no, no seven out of tens, just bad Nintendo. The editorial is called Nintendo's lawsuit against Power World isn't just bad for the industry, it's bad for Nintendo. Can the tension of family-friendly nice guys and we sue everyone and sent a disabled person to jail really continue to exist in perpetuity? The first point he makes is that the Power lawsuit is terrible for the games industry, and he mentions something that we've talked about on this channel before, which is Warner Brothers patenting the Nemesis system from the Mortar games and how that's basically removed it from the PC gaming world because we're not getting any new Shadows of Mortar games and they own it, so no more Nemesis system anymore. He mentions another thing that came into my mind and I was actually going to make a video on it, but now I'll cover it in this video, is that if we go back to the early days of the FPS, FPSs were just called Doom clones. And if you look at that design of the Pokey Battle Ball thing that Nintendo have patented, and you imagine that being recast as what the opening scene of Doom looks like with the gun in the middle, the health bars, and you could easily see that if Nintendo had created Doom, but they created Doom in 2024 and patented it as, as, they, as they have with the Pokemon case, they would have just patented the first person shooter out of existence, at least in that form. And I think we can all agree, it would be pretty absurd if John Romero owned the rights to all first person shooters, because we'd be playing Dai Katana until the end of time. And that game was really terrible. Kids out there, go look it up. That was a bad game. Or imagine if the 4X games had been patented by Sid Meier's. Or Lord British takes out a patent on an open world with respawnable monsters that a player walks around in, kills them, and levels up. The point is that even if those patents wouldn't hold up in a court of law, the very litigiousness surrounding game design would likely stifle creativity in a huge way. And I think almost everyone besides the hardcore Nintendo fanboys are in agreement with PC Gamer on this. I think it's impossible to think about this scenario being more widespread and it not harming the gaming industry overall and our ability to enjoy games. Where I actually kind of disagree with the PC Gamer article is that I don't think that this is going to hurt Nintendo's image at all. Let me explain why. So the PC Gamer article mentions the arrest and imprisonment of Gary Bowser who is paying back Nintendo tens of millions of dollars in damages through civil lawsuits for providing uh, basically the ability to play pirated games on your Nintendo DS, something for which he himself profited and eventually ended up in federal trouble with the US justice system. 
Now, it is widely suspected that the severity of the federal charges that Gary Bowser faced were largely due to Nintendo being a $65 billion company putting pressure on the U.S. judicial system. Now, how fair you think that is and what you think about the U.S. judicial system and the role of major companies and motivations in that, I'll leave up to you, my viewer. And I'll keep my thoughts on this for another video that I may do in the future, breaking down the Gary Bowser case as a look back, as a bit of a retrospective. But I think these and other lawsuits actually do little to hurt Nintendo with their core fan base. And it's for a reason that's a little bit more blunt and a little, frankly a little bit less interesting. Most people do not read PC Gamer. They do not watch YouTube commentary channels. That is the small minority even of the population of people that play games. And when I think about it, I'm like, oh my God, if I just covered random drama every day, I'd be getting like four or five times the amount of views probably. But that's entirely beside the point. The point is that given that Nintendo's purchasing base is either loyal customers within Japan, which as we've discussed in previous videos, and as you can see in the comments on my videos, almost everyone defending Nintendo's attitude towards copyright is Japanese. So domestically, I do not think this is hurting them all that much. The Power World devs, sadly, are really the outsiders. As for most of the normies out there that are buying Nintendo Switch games for their kids or the casual gamers, like seriously, what Karen out there is going to be upset that Pokemon with guns got sued? In the end, all she's going to think is, thank God, now my child can't play Pokemon with guns. Something I've talked a lot about on this channel recently vis-a-vis -vis companies like Ubisoft, who are going down the drain really, really fast. Blizzard, who I think were kind of going down the drain and now they're kind of pulling themselves back out of the drain hesitantly, is that these companies have learned they actually do need to respond to the mood in the gaming commentary space, in the gaming community, on Reddit, and then that's a kind of important part of managing their companies in this digital age. But Nintendo is quite different. Nintendo fans are different. The demographic is different. They're a much bigger company that targets a lot of demographics that aren't on Reddit as much, that aren't on the internet in that way. People that might play games, but don't necessarily see themselves as gamers, i.e. members of that culture or interest more broadly. And in that respect, I don't think they give a darn about what Nintendo do legally. The article also makes the comment that the timing is particularly baffling, which I also think they probably should have researched more. I think we can be pretty certain now that the timing had something to do with Power World being released on the PS5 within Japan. As we know, Japan, not a big Xbox area, right? I think the number of, I think it's 2% of the Japanese gaming market is Xbox. So who cares that it's on Game Pass, right? Uh, the number of Japanese players on Steam is also relatively low. Japanese gamers play on the PlayStation 5 or the Switch. So this, I think, is ultimately about Nintendo being able to defend their IP on their home turf, as it were, to make a point about this and to crush another small Japanese startup. So yeah, in the end, there, I don't think there's anything baffling about Nintendo's timing if we also allow for the fact that they filed patents explicitly around the release of Power World in order to do this legally. I mean, it probably takes a good six months to get something through patent court. But nonetheless, I think it is a good step forward. I wish more media outlets would just come out and say, uh, in the future, if we do review Nintendo games, we're going to mention that Nintendo are an absolutely horrible company that are at this point, I think it's safe to say, just a threat to the gaming space. They've been a threat to games preservation for years. It took them years and years and years of uh, protesting against emulation to finally add in their own emulation. And I was recently playing on my Switch some of the emulated games, and they're terrible compared to uh, what you could do on a on a on a, a player made uh, emulator uh it's it's they're they're they've been terrible for game preservation and right now if they continue to do patent lawsuits like this i mean imagine a situation in which the guys over at marvelous studios who make the story of the seasons games aka boku jimono Gatari, aka harvest moon just decided hey um stardew valley that looks a lot like our game and they are a game publisher that are a subsidiary of Nintendo. I mean, you you can see if this if this got out of hand, Nintendo doing this, how it how things could spiral 
pretty darn fast. And on that dark note, I will leave you. I apologize. Today's video is a little bit rambly. I am Sick Man Banjo today. Sick Man Banjo, which sounds like a guy that kind of comes on the Bam Magura show back on MTV in the day. And it's like, hey, it's Sick Man Banjo. Why do they call him Sick Man Banjo? Man, he does the sickest ollies. Yeah. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video. If you like the video, like and subscribe. And I shall see you in the next video. Bye-bye.